starting now. Okay, excellent. And All right, well, listen, well, welcome everybody. Um, I want, just before I hand over to Nabil from uh, Pono, I just wanted to kind of introduce this morning. Um, you know, we, you may be saying, well, why is Travel Gallery working with Pono? Um, I mean, they've been a partner for us, um, for our retail clients for a number of years. And we, it's, a, it's a brand we've always liked simply because of the, the, the fantastic, uh, sorry, I was just asking me to let me share the screen. So let me just uh, do that. Sorry, hang on a second. Uh, share screen. Uh, right, you should be able to share your screen now, now Bill, if you want to try. Um, so, um, we, um, we've worked with, uh, with Ponon for our clients. We've always had fantastic reviews and, and, and clearly they're a French brand, although Nabil's going to try and convince us as a Frenchman that they're not as French as uh, they actually uh, appear to be. Um, and, but we've been, we've been talking with Nabil quite closely about some of the interesting cruisers around the world. And basically we, we, we've agreed a deal with Nabil where we can work and sell through to travel agents. Um, in conjunction with yourselves for your clients and pay a 12% commission on the full value of all cruisers. Um, so we felt that's something it's worth exploring um, with ATO agents and other agents. Um, and uh, that's kind of the background to, to why we sit here today talking about these cruisers. We've picked three particular cruisers that we're particularly fond of. And, and I'll just say a few words around each one. Um, but before I do that, let me hand over to Nabil, who's going to give us a, a short introduction before we talk about the three cruisers. And we're aiming for this to be finished in about 30 minutes. All right, so thank you for uh, the introduction. Um, thank you uh, for everyone for uh, taking uh, a bit of your time uh, to be here uh, with us today. Um, I'm really glad to, to work with uh, with, uh, with Travel Gallery. Uh, they've been great so, so, so far. Um, so uh, I'm really glad to, to, to work with them and to introduce to you today, uh, Ponant. So some of you might have heard about Ponant. Uh, we are indeed uh, a French brand. I'm French myself. You already got that since uh, the right beginning. I opened my mouth, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, so uh, if something is not well uh, said or not really well understood, please, uh, say it. I won't take it personally. I'm also here to, to, to learn English. So let's get back to, um, to Ponant. Ponant, uh, it's a French brand created 31 years ago. Um, so uh, just uh, by that, you understand that we are a real uh, expert of what we are actually doing. Uh, we have two kind of cruises. The first one is the yachting cruise and the second one are expedition cruise. The only difference will be that in expedition cruise, the excursions uh, will be included in the price. So let's move on to the next slides. Just a quick nutshell on uh, who we are uh, part of. So we are part of Artemis Group that owns uh, brands such as Gucci, as you can see on the screen, Yves Saint Laurent, Bûcheron, Christie's, and much more. So just to give you a little nutshell on, on in a nutshell, uh, a clear idea of who we are uh, as a, who we have as a sister brands and the type of luxury that we are aiming. In a quick nutshell, uh, I would say if you have to remember only five words of this webinar, those will be the five words uh, you should remember. So we do have one of the mod most modern fleet in the world. We have currently 12 luxury yachts and they are all certified green ships. We have a large variety of itineraries, um, as you can see here on the screens, uh, getting to more than 100 countries and, uh, and we've selected uh, a handful of, of, of them uh, to present and to get a bit more in details for you. Exclusivity, so we are really trying our best to get away from busier shipping routes and this is uh, really in our DNA. Boutique, so I would say Ponant is not a small cruise ship, is a boutique cruise ship. So just to give you an image, um, so I'll get back to the clear image on this, but imagine uh, 500 people. We have 
half of this as the maximum size of our vessels. Maximum capacity of the Ponant ship is 270 guests, which is really boutique size. And obviously the French uh, art of living and savoir-faire, which is really uh, something most of, uh, uh, of uh, our clients are really fond of. Few examples of that French savoir-faire. So we do have, for instance, Veuf Clicquot for the champagne. We do have La Durée for the macaroons. They are delicious. I hope you, uh, you, you tried at least once or one day you will. Hermès for the toiletterie, Ducasse Conseil, for, uh, for the food. So Mr. Ducasse, Alain Ducasse is the chef of the Dorchester, for instance, in London. Uh, he has many three-star uh, uh, restaurants all around the world. We are working with him uh, and his team, Paul and Sotis for the spa. Who is Ponon? You might, uh, you might uh, ask yourself this question and uh, to, be, uh, to be open uh, with you, uh, most of, uh, of you might think that we are only for French people, which is not the case. We are a fully bilingual onboard cruise company. All the menus, excursions, um, announcements and so on will be in French and in English. Uh, actually, over more than 50% of our clientele is coming from an English speaking country. It can be the US, it can be uh, Australia, it can be the UK. Um, so um, please break that uh, first impression you might have about Ponant. Yes, we are French. Yes, we are proud to be French, but we are not just, um, how can I put that? Stupid enough to be only for French people, let's say. Uh, we, we are an international company and we will welcome your clients as well. A lot of single uh, travelers with us, a lot of uh, couples, of course. Uh, we do have a lot of themes as well. So uh, this, uh, this is for you uh, to, to, to be aware of. It's an all-inclusive company, all meals, open bar, policy, taxis, sauna, 20, uh, 20 hours, room service, butler and suites, shore excursions when it's uh, expedition, and unlimited Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi does work really well. I've been myself to Antarctica with Ponant, and I was able to do some uh, messenger, some video with my family, which is uh, showing you how good the Wi-Fi is. We have the youngest fleet in the, the industry. Um, so with our first ship, which is called Le Ponant, like our brand created, as, a, as I was saying, more than 30 years ago. Afterwards, we got four sister ships from 2010 to 2015 with Le Boreal, L'Austral, Le Soleal, and Le Lirial. And then the last few years since 2018, we got the explorers, um, even smaller ships, and we got, uh, we will have in a few months, uh, Le Commandant Charcot, which is a, a beautiful ship. So uh, Le Ponant, 16 cabins only, a beautiful ship, can be charter, can be ideal for groups. Then the sister ships between 122 and 132 cabins with 95% balconies, which is always uh, a must uh, to, to have. Then we got the explorers. Uh, we got six of them with 92 cabins, even smaller than the sister ships. 100% balconies this time, so which is fantastic. And as I was saying, Le Commandant Charcot with 135 cabins and again, 100% balconies. This is the picture of our uh, biggest ship next to a well-known ship in the UK, the Celebrity Eclipse. So as you can see, uh, the, the top deck, the top uh, Ponant deck is just reaching the lowest deck uh, with, with balconies of Celebrity Eclipse. So this is really important for you to understand that having such a small ship, boutique ship, is, uh, is a huge difference versus uh, bigger ships in terms of experience, in terms of how close we can get to places and so on. So a lot of advantages. Just a quick focus on, uh, on the Explorer, so uh, on the Ultimate Explorer, Le Commandant Charcot. So this ship is actually, as you can see here, on the second, uh, second line. Uh, so it's, it's basically respecting the highest, uh, the highest uh, um, level of ice, uh, ice conditions. So here, 
Le Commandant Charcot is a hybrid icebreaker that can go to geographic, the, the geographic North Pole, for instance. So it does respect one of the highest uh, uh, level of ice uh, capacity. And as you can see, uh, it's really above all the competition on all the industry. It's above all the other names you can, uh, you, you can think about. So uh, Le Commandant Charcot is a true, unique, Polar Explorer, and this is uh, truly representing what is Ponant. Few pictures, uh, I won't get too much into uh, thousands of pictures, but just for you to realize, uh, top left, you have a restaurant, uh, top uh, bottom right, you have a spa, for instance. Um, here, you have the main lounge, which is, uh, which is fabulous, really open to the exterior world, a lot of lights. Uh, it's quite a modern design, quite Scandinavian, uh, I would say. And this is uh, just uh, four, uh, four cabins for you to also uh, see. Um, the bottom right one is an entry level cabin. So as you can see, it's really big enough as an entry level cabin and does have uh, a balcony, which is uh, fabulous. Another thing I wanted to say is that on the Explorer, so the one with 92 cabins, we do have what we call the Blue Eye. So the Blue Eye is the world first multi centurial underwater lounge. Uh, you get into that lounge, which, which is situated 2.5 meters below the sea level, and you'll be able to, to see fauna, flora, and hear it uh, thanks to some. Um, some uh, captors that will be capturing five kilometers around the ship, the sounds of the nature. Uh, so this is truly a unique uh, experience. So a quick, uh, just a quick story to finish, and then we get into details of, of the, the, the itineraries. But uh, so here, imagine yourself on a cruise between Greenland and, uh, and the north of, uh, of Canada. The, the captain, the Ponon captain, takes uh, the mic and say to everyone, OK, uh, welcome on board. The aim of this cruise will be to reach the, up, to get up north uh, as much as possible and to have the new Ponon North record. Uh, they all want to have this record. And what we do in Ponon is that we try to involve our guests into that also um, expedition. Uh, so we really involve everyone. So here we include guests, and as you can see, um, we tried and they tried to find their ways. But well, you know, uh, it's an expedition cruise and, and things are unexpected sometimes. And here we go. So um, here, of course, we are blocked. Uh, we, can, we cannot go further north. So we could have said to anyone, well, um, thank you for uh, taking, uh, for being part of the adventure. But uh, as you can see, this is not up to us. So uh, enjoy your, uh, your drinks, enjoy the champagne. Um, and that's it. This is not the Ponon style. This is not the Ponon way. We like to do the best and to provide the best we can. So we decided actually to uh, stop the ship here, as you can see on the picture. And the expedition crew, uh, team with the captain, they disembarked and they triple checked the thickness of the ice. And thanks to the fact that it was thick enough, we actually disembarked everybody in the ice, all the guests at the same time. And we popped up some bottle of champagne just in front of the ship. So from a moment that could have been a really frustrating moment, we transformed that into one of their best experience cruise ever. And those people are well-traveled uh, people. So they know what they, uh, they talk about. So this is the Ponon style. We are flexible, we, will, we are experienced, we have an experienced crew on board and we'll do everything for our guests to have the best experience ever. Just a quick map for you to realize that we are covering the whole uh, world uh, as you can see here. But now, obviously, let's get a bit more into details um, with the first, uh, the first uh, of our selected uh, crews with uh, Seychelles, Maldives, and Sri Lanka. So I hand over to Neil. Maybe, Neil, you want to speak about this as being an expert of this area? Well, I don't know about the complete expert, but we certainly have some knowledge in the Indian Ocean. So. Um, yeah, we, why do we pick these three cruisers? We just think they've got, they're three very different cruisers. 
And I think they capture the essence of what Ponant is, but also the areas that we sell. That, that this Indian Ocean cruise is clearly very interesting because it ends up in Sri Lanka. And you all know our passion for Sri Lanka, but it starts in the Seychelles. So it's very easy to travel. You can open jaw on Emirates or Etihad, uh, down into the Seychelles and fly back from Sri Lanka. So that, that, that's easy in the first place. Um, we can arrange the pre and post uh, very easily. And to just give you an example, I was actually quoting for another agent today for somebody who's doing a cruise out of the Seychelles on uh, the 12th of um, January next year, or 16th of January next year. And I've done a pre seven night stay at the Kempinski. Okay, not the best hotel in the, in the Seychelles, but a good solid four star. Uh, seven nights in the Kempinski, transfers from the airport to the cruise, drop off, a day room on the way back before they fly back, because that's originating into and out of the Seychelles. And that was just a thousand pounds per head. So we've got the ability to add some really, really good uh, pre and post. When you arrive in Sri Lanka, then we can tailor something from a three day to a two week holiday in Sri Lanka, depending on whether you just want an elephant experience and come and stay at the Recycle State House or take an iconic train to the high tea country and then to the cultural triangle and then end up for a few days on the beach. So without anything else, back to Nabil to talk about this cruise. Well, I, now I really want to, to get on that cruise and, and do the pre and post with you guys. Uh, thanks for your knowledge. Just a quick note on the fact that uh, we offer on board our cruise uh, possibility to dive. Um, so most of the time uh, when, when we stop, we have one or two uh, possibility per day, which is uh, fantastic. So you have everything on, online if you want to, to double check, but of course also double check with uh, private gallery. They are well aware of this possi possibility as well. The next one we decided to, to, uh, to show you uh, today is called the Wild and Authentic Corsica. So uh, we have many dates, we just selected this one, but please have a look at the price. The price is really, really uh, interesting. Eight days for 2,600 uh, pounds, just, just uh, above that. And uh, the fantastic thing with this is that you will discover uh, clearly the whole Corsica because it's doing the circumnavigation. Corsica, I'm not sure if you are aware of this, but it's called the, the, the beauty island. So as you can see on the picture, it's a fantastic island. I've been myself there uh, several times. And it's not only beauty, uh, the coast, but when you disembark, you have also uh, a, a, fantastic, a fantastic people, fantastic stories, and fantastic culture. You have a lot of good food, amazing food, one of the best in France. Uh, you have a lot of culture and a lot of heritage. I know that here at Travel Gallery, and Neil can uh, tell you a bit more uh, about this, but uh, the fact that he's uh, starting and finishing in, in Nice is, is quite uh, quite handy. Yeah, no, absolutely, Nabi. Um, I'm actually going to go back to the previous cruise in a minute because there's some other stuff I wanted to just mention, but I, let's deal with this one. For me, one of the advantages, now, a week ago, this seemed like a great safe bet for the summer. We really thought that we would be able to send people for uh, an August or September cruise out of Corsica. Today, well, we're all questioning that, but you know that's out of our hands. But let's just assume we can. The first thing is the advantage of this is it's the French ship sailing out of France and sailing within France. So you're not going to get into the position of where a French ship turns up in Italy or a Greek ship turns up in France and they're refused because it's not a, 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 a ship which is is uh, out of that country. So they're sailing on a French flag um, and you've got therefore the security that this hot cruise is all within the French jurisdiction. We've also got a suggestion on this for a pre or post cru cruise. I mean, clearly we can do lots of things around the south of France, whether it's staying at Chateau saint martin or one of the uh, Urpta collection properties, which fits beautifully with this brand as well. We've also got a new wellness resort which is really quite exciting, which is just outside of Saint-Tropez called Lily of the Valley. I'm not gonna put images up just in the interest of time, et cetera today, but have a look at it on the internet. Fantastic property that specializes in diet, food and uh, wellness programs. Now, 
the interesting thing is they have kind of two styles within their restaurant. One where you can eat completely nothing wellness food, where they'll just mush it up and, you know, make you lose ultimate weight for the week. Or alternatively, they'll give you a uh, exquisite dining experience, but also combined with the right level of exercise and other activities during the stay so that you don't put weight on or you lose weight. You set your goals and then you go about it. We thought that's quite an interesting twist. You indulge yourself on an eight day cruise, you eat whatever you want, and then perhaps you have a week in a fantastic wellness resort. And for those of you that know Saint-Tropez, it's just outside of Saint-Tropez um, near Ramatril, um, which is a few kilometers outside, uh, beautifully built, open in the last few years, new beach club opening down on what is a, quite a quiet beach, not the Pampelon beach that uh, is very busy. So. I think as a pre and post, doing something in the south of France is a really interesting twist. Can we just go back to the previous slide, maybe, please, on the, on the Indian yes. Ocean, if you wouldn't mind. I want to just pull out a couple of other things on this, this cruise that is worth mentioning. It also visits the Maldives and spends, actually, I think it's three days in the Maldives. So they're cruising between uh, two of the different atolls, the Bar Atoll, and for those of you that know the Maldives well, I apologize, but for those of you who don't, the Bar Atoll is one of the best biosphere uh, locations for diving and particularly for uh, sharks. Um, and my own personal experiences, it's excellent for um, large manta ray as well. So Even snorkeling. I, yeah, so, or, or snorkeling and for, for diving. So I've dived in probably 10 atolls in the Maldives. Um, and I would say that the Bar Atoll is one of the best, if not the best experiences that, uh, that I've had in the Maldives. So you get that experience of around the Seychelles Islands for a few days. You have a three day sea crossing. You then have a, a period of time in the Bar Atoll and in and around. And then you jump across to Sri Lanka. You go into the historic port of Gaul. You come up, you disembark in Colombo. And then from Colombo, as I said, we can do some of the, the other uh, post um, excursions. Great. And finally, if we go forward two slides now, we're just going to mention yes. the, the Arctic cruise. And what, why do we put this in? Well, again, for pre and post, this is interesting. Ponon tend to sell this particular cruise with flights from Paris. That's one of the easy ways of actually going on this. But actually what we've done with our clients in the past is do pre and post in Norway and Sweden where we've taken clients up to Bergen, up to Oslo, and then flown them up to join the cruise in Longdeburn. Is that, have I pronounced that correctly, Longdeburn? Um, and then after the cruise, we've taken them perhaps back into Norway, over to Sweden, and then back. We've had some fantastic experiences as a result of that and some great feedback. I mean, it's not cheap. Um, because touring Scandinavia is not a cheap option, but for your high-end clients, a great experience. So Nabil, over to you on this one. Yes. So on this, just a, a quick, uh, quick note. Uh, Ponant is well known as being uh, an expedition uh, a cruise company. Since the right beginning, we've been created by uh, a maritime officer and, um, and called Jean-Emmanuel Sauvé. And his fault was to create a company that will be able to bring everyone to discover the beauty of the world. So since the right beginning, we've been created and thought as, uh, as being a, a cruise expedition uh, company, which is fantastic for obviously discovering such places as Svalbard. So uh, this is definitely, uh, uh, Ponant is definitely one of the uh, the best cruise you can find to discover this. As I told you uh, already, we've been doing this for more than 30 years. So uh, we are not new. Uh, we know those places. And, um, and also just one quick note, but you know, in those places, not, every, not everything is, is already charted. So sometimes we do chart and we add every single year, we, we add new things to, to the to, to, to the chart. And this knowledge, we have it. The others, they don't. So we have 30 years of knowledge. We know which, uh, which place we can go, which other place we cannot. Uh, and we, we sometimes, the other companies, 
they literally just don't know this just because they haven't been there for the past 30 years. So this is not something you can buy. Experience is not something you can buy. So um, definitely uh, expedition cruise is, 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 is our thing. And, and, uh, and Svalbard, we, we know it by heart. So uh, that, will, that will be, uh, I think, the best way for you uh, and your clients to discover uh, this beautiful place. I'm not going to, too much into details of the destination, but we could spend, honestly, 15 minutes, 20 minutes easily speaking about every single place in Svalbard. Excellent, Nabil. So, um, I was going to say, we are just getting... touch a little bit on uh, two things. Just, yeah, okay, why book with you, but particularly about the COVID protocols, because, you know, um, cruising was the first to hit the headlines last year as people ended up, uh, you know, stranded on cruise boats with COVID uh, running riot. And I think there is still a level of, you know, question mark around that. So, can you just touch on that for us? Yes, of course. So, um, just a quick, uh, a quick note. Uh, last year, we've been the we've been the only cruise line who've done over the summer more than uh, more than two cruises. Um, no one else did that. We actually did more than sixty cruises. No problem at all. Everyone was really happy. Uh, the evaluation rate of of those cruises were really excellent. Um, so. It's not only that we are, uh, we've been leading the, the cruise industry into, into this, uh, putting, uh, being the first to put in place a COVID safe protocol, but we actually uh, uh, experienced it on board with real guests already, and not just once or twice, but more than 60 times. So it's tested protocols. We are already the experts. Everyone yeah. actually is looking at us uh, closely and, and they took inspiration for their own protocols as well. So be reassured that obviously, you know, it's not a hundred percent guarantee, but we are right on the top of, of what is being done uh, in the world currently uh, for uh, when we speak about uh, safe protocol. Thank you. Um, I mean, at that point, let me open it up. Um, does anyone have any questions for Nabil or for, for, for us, indeed? Sandy, you got some? Uh, no? Oh, I saw you leaning forward there. I thought you were going to come in. <laughs> anyone got some questions? No? And um, I think Nabil said that he would be happy to come on a call if, if you have a client who has more questions. Um, on a Zoom call, or wouldn't you, yes. Nabil? Yes, um, of course, of course. So uh, I'm here to help you. Uh, it doesn't uh, necessarily have to be uh, on one specific cruise. I, I can speak uh, about our COVID safe protocol to try to reassure them as well, to help you a little bit. I can speak about obviously some destination. I can speak about the cruise itself. I, I can speak about whatever you want. Please use uh, use me. Uh, I'm I'm being here, uh, trying to do my best for you. And and if uh, it can help you at the end of the day to convince your client, I'll be more than happy to do so. So I'm available. Uh, you have my contact details, and obviously you know uh, Farzan Anil and Oli. So uh, feel free as well to get in touch with them, and they know me well. Uh, we are in touch uh, almost on a daily basis. So. Um, Nabil, Nabil has also promised us for these this summer bookings that we can um, take a, a deposit which we can call truly refundable um, because there's obviously we take a bit of a chance, don't we, with um, with this summer, um, and we want to be able to refund people quickly. Um, so if it's not waiting for the not not that we are saying that Ponal won't return the money quickly, but it's much easier if within within two days of us knowing that a client can't travel, we can return the deposit. And that's what, um, that's what really, really liked. I think there's um, a question uh, now from Chris. Yeah. Um. So the question is the prices that were shown, are they cruise only without the flights? So. For two of them, let me get back. Thank you for your question, by the way, Chris. So uh, for the Seychelles one and for Morning. the Corsica one, 
they are without uh, flights. Obviously, for the flights, um, Travel Gallery can really help you uh, here. Um, for uh, the Svalbard, as Neil was saying, um, here on that, uh, as you can see on the bottom right of the, of the screen with the chart, you see some red dots with flight from Paris. This can be depackaged if you want, if you prefer uh, Travel Guy to include some flights from London or Manchester or uh, from, uh, from any places in the UK, uh, they can do it as well. And obviously here the price will be, um, uh, will, will decrease a little bit uh, per person. It won't be 6,000 to, uh, to 200 pounds per person, but it will be slightly less plus your uh, flights from the UK. Thank you. No. No problem. I know my dad was trying to say something, but he was on mute. Sorry, I was just, just, uh, I was, apologies, I was trying to manage the fact that Fazal was in another room and the speaker was very loud and it was getting feedback on here. Um, the, um, yeah, but no, that's great. I mean, anybody else got uh, any questions? Polly? I've got a question. So, Bill, I'm looking at the Svalbard, it's eight days. Yes. And that arrow looks as if it's going all the way around to the east coast. So that looks as if it's trying to circumnavigate, circumnavigate the whole of Spitsbergen in eight days. So uh, we, I sell a lot of polar expedition mm -hmm. voyages, and that, I wouldn't say that you could even do that in eight days. So they can't be hoping to do it all on every voyage, because eight days would normally be, you know, the, the west, the north, maybe going down a little bit into Nord Iceland and then a bit around the south, but you wouldn't be able to do the east. So are you saying that that's sort of roughly what they might aim to, but it's dependent on the conditions? I think you 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 say to, you say also what we what we do obviously depends uh, of uh, of the, the the weather conditions. Uh, what we do to do this, because yes, eight days is quite short, is that we are focusing on some specific areas. As you can see here, we, we start, for instance, uh, we start with uh, Kongsfjorden and so on. So we directly go there without uh, any doubt. Uh, we, we, we pull full speed. We stop here. So that's also saving us a little bit of time to be focused on specific uh, areas. Then to touch the east, to get back on this specific point, what we do is that if we have enough time, we'll get a bit deeper in the east. But if we don't have enough time, then we'll just touch it. Maybe once we do one disembarkation, and then we, we go back to the normal uh, circumnavigation. So everything will depend clearly on the, on, the, on the situation of that specific cruise. So that's why we actually put these in dots on the, on the map because this is not something uh, we, uh, we can say clearly we are going to get that deep or maybe not. This will depend on, on the specific cruise. Okay, and then something you mentioned there is about how many times, for example, each day would people be getting off the ship and onto the land? Sure. Uh, so day, how many times? Of One course. So I can speak about my personal experience. I've been not in Svalbard, but in Antarctica with Ponant, of course. And every single day, um, we disembark uh, two to three times. So, which is which is quite exceptional. Uh, it could have been, uh, and it was uh, either zodiac cruising or landings with hikes and so on, but two to three times every single day. And on top of this, I got as well um, uh, an experience uh, to to do some uh, zodiac. Uh, some zodiac in uh, not zodiac some kayak sorry uh, in Antarctica on top of those landings and and two to three times uh, uh, per day so in uh, six days uh, I had almost 15 activities uh, uh, over the over my cruise and we tend to to do the same uh, with all our expedition crews so two to three times per day that will be my answer Okay, and if people do like sea kayaking, do you have to pre-book that so that there's a enough kayaks? So what we usually do is that, yes, we, uh, on, in the first day, we announce to everyone that we have kayaks availabilities, and then we have listing. 
And depending on the on how many people want to put uh, to to have this experience, will uh, will include that activity one day, two days, or every single day. Uh, so on the on the kayaks, we have two people. We have 12, ca 12 kayaks. So one uh, per per one going out, we can have twenty four people. And if we do this two times every single day, we can have uh, easily everyone. And so people don't need to pre-book it. They don't need to say no. in advance, I want to kayak no. and I need to pay for it. Okay. Only once they, are, they get on board. We found I this a little bit, uh, a bit uh, better because it's also engaging uh, uh, the guests uh, with, with our team. And we like also to create that spirit. We don't want them just to be here and wait. We want them to be proactive a little bit, uh, not being complicated. But uh, it's also a way for us to uh, to involve everyone. And there, to, Nabil, just to qualify that, and that's included. It's not an additional cost because these. It's not an additional cost. Yes, you're right. I should have mentioned this, but yes, indeed. Um, when it's an expedition cruise with Ponant, the Svalbard is clearly one. Uh, everything is included. Uh, so uh, the Wi-Fi, the and as well the excursions, uh, the daily excursions. So uh, everything is included. You're right. Well, that's really unusual because normally you have to pay and pre-book it and pay. And if you choose not to use it that day, you can they can let somebody else use the kayak. But it's basically you have to pre-book it. And then once they're sort of taken, they're taken. So that's really unusual. That's a really good selling point. Yes, yes, definitely. We are, uh, you know, uh, maybe a bit shy uh, with, with this on our website and so on. But clearly, when, once it's understood, uh, it's, a, it's a key selling point. And, and you're right. It sounds like uh, you, you really know your, your thing. So um, I'm glad to, to, to have you also today to, to, to speak with you and to explain this a bit deeper, because usually uh, we tend not to explain that. Deep, so, but it's indeed a key selling point, And you're definitely right with that. Thank you. Thanks, Polly. Anybody else got any questions? Okay, well, Nabil, you've done a fantastic job of, uh, of championing the, uh, the great French product that Pond oh, has. Last question from Sandy there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there is a question. Uh, do you, what was that? Do you have, let's have a look. Uh, Sandy's asking, do you have a brochure or is it all online? There is a brochure, but I'll yes. let Nabil answer that. <laughs> yes, so Sandy, thanks for, uh, for the question. So indeed, we do have brochures. Um, what we've done uh, because of, uh, of the COVID situation and so on, uh, because you cannot send you know, brochures or stuff like this uh, easily, is that we've created our latest brochures uh, as being only online brochure. But obviously, uh, when things will get back to, uh, to normal, uh, we'll get back to uh, uh, having our normal brochure. Normally, we have two big brochures, uh, one for winter, one for summer. On top of this, we, we tend to have uh, two to three smaller brochures um, focusing on, on, uh, on few. They're few amazing. So we've, so, yeah. we've had them on our shelves. We've had them on our shelves for a long time and really, really informative. They've got a lot of information in them. I actually, yes. and San, Sandy's asked about them next year. So I think um, I think we've got, um, you, you've started to take the pre-registration now, haven't you, um, Nabil? I did one so, the, uh, yesterday, so yes. Saturday. Yes, uh, Sandy. So you, thanks for again this uh, this this question. So indeed, uh, we got uh, 2022 already available online. Maybe not all our portfolio yet, but it will come in the 10 coming days for the whole summer. So this is fantastic news. We already have uh, opened uh, some cruises in 2022 as well as in 2023, which is fantastic. And uh, our uh, online brochure includes, uh, I think, Q1 and as well Q2 2022. Uh, so uh, indeed, you, you have 2022 already uh, available. Thank you. You're welcome, Cindy. Okay, I think that probably is it. I'm going to, at that point, uh, draw a line underneath it. Thank you very much indeed. If anybody's got any follow-up questions, please do uh, send them. Um, we'll send a recording out as well if you want to send it on to any of your colleagues. Um, and we had a few people who apologised they couldn't join us today and wanted to see it. 
Um, uh, just finally, where we are and what we're doing for taking bookings uh, in the current environment, um, we are very happy to take um, bookings for July, August for the Maldives, probably one of the few destinations, but at the moment we're taking them without deposits, um, unless you particularly want to tick tie somebody in. For the autumn, for September, for, from October onwards, we've been busy with inquiries for the Indian Ocean. Um, and I think uh, it's a good opportunity still to try and get those bookings in. Seychelles is clearly now uh, accepting clients, but it's on the red list. I see, still see Seychelles becoming a earlier sell than some other Indian Ocean destinations. And finally, Mauritius um, clearly at the moment is causing a bit of a, uh, a, a pain. Uh, and is not open for tourists, um, and we don't really see Mauritius opening before the autumn. So, um, happy selling. Let's hope we are allowed to sell and send people away for the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. And thanks very much, everyone, for coming on today's, uh, today's little webinar. Neil, uh, sorry, just before you go, can you repeat that? So what you said about the Maldives, you're happy to make bookings for the Maldives. The, the Maldives July is open. August. Sure, I mean, the Maldives... Yeah. Deposit. yeah, the Maldives is open today for people to travel to. It's just we're not allowed to travel there. So I, I was working on the assumption until I read the Times headline this morning that we would be hopefully sending people to, to, to the Maldives in June. We've got bookings in June. Uh, I did a booking yesterday for July, but didn't take a deposit because the client didn't want to pay anything till after the 12th of April. And I personally think that's really sensible okay. because if you want to mm. travel in the next six months, why, why lock money up? Why pay credit card charges to you? Uh, sending money to us for us to then have to refund that, you know, in a few months time. So for even for June, although I think that looks less likely now, given what we've seen today in the press, but for July, August, September, in September, of course, the rain does start to come in September and October in, in, in the Maldives, but, you know, some people are prepared to take that chance. We will take a reservation. We will get the best deal. We will hold the flights. Uh, the flights typically have got to be ticketed depending. I mean, British Airways is still using six weeks for July, yesterday, uh, but I think that could well be shortened. Uh, it's often only two weeks. Um, and we will hold maximum flexibility. And when we've got a confidence that we're allowed to travel, then we'll collect some money off your client. Okay, thanks. Okay. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Nabil. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Yes, Kay, we'll, we'll forward it to you. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. End of recording.